In this video, we will assess the dialectic of community and society, or Gemeinschaft und Gesellschaft. The reference for this is the German sociologist and philosopher Ferdinand Tonis, with the material used taking inspiration from his book Community and Society, Gemeinschaft und Gesellschaft, published in 1887. As per the work of Tony's, each relationship is a mutual action. One party is active or gives, while the other party is passive or receives. Such is the nature of these actions that they are concerned with either preservation or destruction. That is, they are either positive or negative. A group which is formed through positive means is called an association, when regarded as a thing or being which acts as a unit inwardly and outwardly. The positive relationship and the resultant association is thought of as either real or organic life, which is an essential characteristic of the community, or as imaginary and mechanical structure, the concept of society. All intimate, private and exclusive living together is life in community. Public life, the world itself, is society. In a community of one's family, one lives bound to it from birth, through good times and bad. As we mature, we enter society as one would enter a foreign country, with a sense of trepidation, like a nervous bird leaving the nest. We are constantly warned of the ills of society or the wider world, but the expression bad community is oxymoronic. If it is a bad community, it is no community at all. In this context, domestic society has a more impersonal, detached and legalistic connotation, while domestic community is more homely, soulful, wholesome and tightly knit conveying a stronger connection between those who share it. One becomes part of a religious community, but a religious society is referred to as such from the outside looking in, as more of an institution. One could speak of a human community, of the whole of mankind, just as a church often does, referring to the Christian community or figurative brotherhood of man, but human society refers to mere coexistence of people totally atomized and independent from each other. If someone says, that's not the society I want to live in, it seems they mean to say, that's not the community I want to live in. The individual doesn't particularly have much power and control over society. They have power and control over their community. Society dwarfs the individual. Society is monolithic. The societal world doesn't revolve around the individual and will ultimately continue with or without them, with great unconcern. It's community that truly cares for the individual, not society. Therefore, if one wants to see change in the world, they must be pragmatic and start small with themselves and their community. Attempting to change the world without an initial sense of pragmatism, is just lofty, wishful idealism. Community is an old phenomenon. Society is a new phenomenon. It could be said that community is felt emotionally, while society is constructed intellectually. Just as with Spenglerian culture and civilization, Tony's uses community and society. The terms are basically interchangeable. Culture and community are rural-based, civilization and society are urban-based. Community is the lasting, genuine form of living connected together. Society is living separate whilst connected. It may appear as a community in name, but not a community in fact. How many people in the modern world typically have a strong relationship with their neighbours? Not many, especially if they live in a city. In contrast to community and culture, society and civilization are temporary and shallow. Thus, community and culture 
ought to be understood as a living organism, surviving only within those who invest in it and nurture it. Society and civilization ought to be understood as a mechanical and technological amalgamation. In prior eras, individuals fostered greater connection with one another due to closer proximity and thus stronger ties within groups in more confined areas. In a genuine community, everyone knows each other, as the degree of separation between individuals is less than in a society. Stronger connection would generally lead to stronger feelings of friendship and kinship. In a modern, liberal, atomized, individualistic society, however, the level of codependence among people is somewhat superficial. The individual lives their own life, makes their own decisions and thus considers themselves the measure of all things. As such, friendships suffer and bonds begin to weaken. In a society, the typical individual no longer feels the need for others, only the need for the expertise of others. This has become more prevalent since the days of the Industrial Revolution, development of the professional workforce and the advancement of technology. All this is considered means of progress. An individual may approach another individual, exchange money for goods and services, and then both individuals go their separate ways, and the closest they come to meaningful connection is well-mannered pleasantries. The customer at the supermarket does not care much for the checkout attendant, and the checkout attendant does not care much for the customer. The customer just wants efficient and fast service. They don't have time for conversation, as they have other errands to run on their busy daily schedule. Meanwhile, the checkout attendant can't spend too long chatting to customers as they are meant to be working and are just there to quickly complete the menial tasks of their jobs until it's time for them to finish their shift and go home. Very little sense of community is established in such a scenario. Treating relationships as merely transactional has become so widespread in the modern world that there is even a common idiom that states people are only friendly to you when they want something in return. When you progress as a society, you regress as a community. And community is very important for health and well-being. Without it, you risk becoming sick, both physically and mentally. Hence why the 2019 film Joker exists as a powerful social commentary on the modern world. The movie exposes that progressive thought has a significant downside, and that is why it strikes people at their core on both sides of the ideological spectrum. Those who are more inclined as thinkers and more socially conservative seem to connect with the raw, gritty and realistic nature of it, whilst those who are socially progressive seem to hate it as it is deemed too harsh, too confronting and conflicts with their ideal. As per the work of Tony's, community is formed from common roots and is mostly strongly associated with four types of relationships. The relation between a mother and child, the relation between husband and wife, the relation between brothers and sisters, and the relation between father and children. Thus, the idea of authority is, within the community, most adequately represented by fatherhood or paternity. Authority, in this sense, does not imply possession and the use in the interest of the master. It means education and instruction as the fulfillment of procreation, i.e., sharing the fullness of one's own life and experience with the children who will grow gradually to reciprocate these gifts and thus establish a truly mutual relationship. In a healthy mother and child relationship, the child enjoys protection, nourishment and instruction. The mother enjoys possession, later obedience and finally 
intelligent assistants. Traditionally, the role of men in the family is to be obtaining and providing for his family, providing the necessities of life and to be aware of clear and present dangers if they arise, to then act as the primary defender of the family against these dangers. The man defends the woman as naturally she is the carrier of the next generation. The woman is then primarily concerned with the protection of the children and in the preservation and preparation of the domestic domain. Masculine energy has biologically been directed toward the outside world. Fighting in self-defense and the leading of the sons in the family and wider community to understand their role and responsibility in becoming the men of tomorrow. A strong community is a balanced combination of individual wills mutually serving and directing each other in equilibrium. We each feel some benefits and enjoyment in the relationship and thus work harder to maintain it. A successful sporting club is a good example of such an association. In such an organization, it is important to appreciate each other's value as individuals, yet to not be selfish in nature. Identifying a goal that is larger than oneself and committing to a certain level of collective will to achieve that goal is the ideal. If related to politics, the shared aim must be something that can be commonly agreed upon, not something that is significantly polarizing. Tony's outlines his three types of dignity or authority as follows. Authority of age, authority of force, and authority of wisdom or spirit. Traditionally, these three types are specifically united in the authority belonging to the father and are necessary for protecting, assisting, and guiding his family. The father may possess this power, but with power comes responsibility. And ideally, having a sense of this responsibility brings forth a desire in the father to honor such demands and answer the call of duty in the family and wider community to the best of his ability. Each authority can be regarded as service and each service as authority provided the particularity involved is taken into consideration. The realm of will, and therefore the will of the community, is a mass of determined force, power, or right. And right is, in essence, will as being able or being allowed, and will as obligation or duty. This is the nature of all derived realms of will in which rights and duties are the two corresponding aspects of the same thing, or nothing but the subjective modalities of the same objective substance of right or force. In this way, through increased and diminished duties and rights, real inequalities exist and develop within the community through its will. Besides the inherited forces and instincts, the influence of a community as an educating and guiding will is the most important factor determining the condition and formation of every individual habit and disposition. Tony states, The ordinary human being, in the long run, and for the average of cases, feels best and most cheerful if he is surrounded by his family and relatives, he is among his own. A connected community with a preconditioned and pre-learned common will equates to less liberty. Meanwhile, a disconnected community or a society which is atomized, self-directed and thus primarily concerned with the will of the individual equates to greater liberty. Yet, too much freedom is just as bad as too much restriction. There is certainly a correlation between the amount of freedom and a measure of contentment. The individual can find contentment 
in freedom and solitude. However, too much solitude can lead to isolation and a lack of social engagement, whilst too much freedom can lead to a lack of order and structure in one's life, perhaps even a lack of purpose or concrete meaning. The individual can also find contentment in living near others and sharing a space. However, too much closeness can feel restrictive and curtails the individual's sense of self. There is an optimal point of convergence between meeting individual needs and meeting social needs. One could argue that it is not possible to precisely locate such a point, and there is undoubted merit to that argument. But another way to interpret the point is as a valuable yet rare commodity, hence why such a median has been referred to as golden by none other than Aristotle. Gold is valuable, but rarely found by chance, not least without ample investment of an equally valuable yet more abundant commodity, time. One thing is for sure, both gold and time do exist. It is in using time wisely to seek the gold that both the individual and the collective can find contentment. Introverts require more solitude and less social interaction, while it is the opposite for extroverts. Above all, the discussion comes down to the system of how we want to live our lives, whether we want to be individuals or collectives. Yet, it is not a pure dialectic between two non-negotiating alternatives because there are shades of grey between black and white. We are not totally one thing or the other, and we ought not to be. There is a necessity for balance. History merely illustrates in fragments of recorded time the gradual swinging of a pendulum between the will of one power of authority of God or the will of many powers as one who become the authority and replace God in an irreligious state or epoch. The pendulum is always swinging. The cycle is always turning, but movement occurs at a glacial pace. Therefore, the rate of change is not always entirely noticeable until a shock or landmark event occurs, disrupting the rhythmic continuity and forcing the world to take stock of where it is. History is full of chaos.